Okay, uh, we're going to learn in this lesson how to do a little bit of After Effects. I've already opened up Adobe After Effects here, um, so let's go through a little bit. First off, just like in uh, Premiere, you've got your project that's going to hold anything you want to import. If you want to import uh, video or pictures, anything at all. Uh, but what we're going to do today is just do everything from internally in After Effects. So to start, we're going to learn a little bit about keyframing uh, and keyframe animation. So to begin, we want to go to appear to file, and we've already got our new project open. So we're going to go to composition and choose a new comp. And your composition window is just the size of your canvas or your program window. Um, so in this case, we're going to do what's a good option here? Let's do HD TV 1080p 29.97. The reason I'm going to choose this is just because it'll be 1080p. It'll be at the right dimensions for high definition video and uh, without dealing with 4K. So we're going to go ahead and click OK for that one. Uh, notice you had your comp name up at the top. If you ever want to change anything, it's a little odd in After Effects. You have to click on it and hit Enter, and you can finally change the name. So the name for this is going to be, uh, let's call it After Effects dash my name. All right, so now that you have a composition, notice in my settings, the comp was for about 12 seconds. Um, you can change the composition settings or anything, even after you make it, if you just click on it, go to composition and change composition settings. Now, if I wanted to, I could change the duration, but uh, for this one, I'm just going to keep it at 10 seconds. Uh, by the way, it's always going to be frames, seconds, minutes, and hours for your time code. Uh, right now, this is 30 frames per second, so if this goes to 29 and goes one frame over, that'll go to the next second. Um, so what we're going to do here is I'm just going to set this for 10 seconds in duration. Click OK. And now notice my timeline has changed. Um, right here, you're able to get your zoom in and zoom out if you really want to tighten up and see frame by frame or on the seconds list. So the first thing we're going to do is we've got this big black blank background. If I click on this little guy, toggle transparency, it shows me that's all just standing for transparency. If I were to render this movie out, uh, this would render black in the background, um, but it is just transparent. So if you ever want to render something out in a, in a format that will support transparency, um, we can do that. All right, so to begin, we're in our composition, and we're going to make a new layer. I'm going to go to Layer, New, Solid. And the solid, I'm going to make a diff uh, different color other than black, otherwise I wouldn't be able to see it black on black. And I'm just going to call this guy Boxy. And Boxy is going to be a nice, let's make Boxy red, nice red color. Click OK. And now this box, you can see, covers the entire screen. Uh, we're going to make this a little bit smaller just so we can animate him on the screen. Um, right now, this layer, I can move around if I want. Um, I've got controls up here for rotation. Um, I've also got uh, some other um, tools that we're not going to get into right now. But if you're familiar with some of them, your rectangle tool, your ellipse tools, all those different things, you'll have them right there. And to get to those, you can always just click and hold, and that will get you the alternate tools that you need. So there's a pen tool for paths, text tool, shape tool, brush, even a clone stamp tool. But we're going to stick with some of the basics today, just your selection tool. And what we're going to do is most of the things you're going to do in After Effects are going to happen either down here in your Layers window on your timeline or up here in the, in the uh, Canvas window or the Composition window. Notice if you ever accidentally double click on something, it's going to focus on just that layer. So for a good example of that, um, let's say we have Boxy, we twirl this down, twirl down Transform Controls, and I'm going to scale Boxy. There's my scale layer, they're linked. So I'm just going to scale Boxy down. I want a more of a box, not a rectangle, so I can unlink that. Now I can scale independently. So there's my box. Um, again, this is the size of the box now on the comp, but if I were to double click on this, it's just going to focus on that box as a whole. That's going to be important um, in just a second. So if you ever accidentally double click on this layer, just know that now you're looking at that layer instead of the composition. A lot of people will be like, wow, I double clicked on this, I'm moving things around, but I can't see any movement happening. It's because you're looking at the layer close up instead of in the composition. Cool. 
Alright, for now, on second thought, I'm going to bring Boxy back out to his original size. Alright, and again with these, you can click and drag on them, or you can click to enter info if you want to. Alright, so now the animation is going to happen. We're going to take our little box character here, and I'm going to have him come across. Nice little bounce and land. Let's have that. So a nice little whoosh. Well, let's make it even simpler. Let's make Boxy fly from over here all the way over here. So upper left to lower right. So what we're going to do with that is I'm going to position his first frame off screen. So I want him to fly into frame. And what we're going to do then is move my timeline indicator to where I want this animation to start happening. So I'm grabbing this little scrubber right here, and I'm moving it to zero on the timeline. I'm going to record my position and click this, uh, this little button for stopwatch. What that's going to do is start this process. If I take it away, it takes all my keyframes away. If I click it once, it allows me to start adding keyframes. So the first time I click it, it adds a keyframe for me. That little diamond shows me that at zero, 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 my box position is this, since I'm animating position. You can animate anything you want. We'll get into that in a second. But next, I want this box to move fairly quickly across the screen, so we'll do half a second, about 15 frames. So I move my timeline indicator off of my keyframe, so now it knows that I'm going to make a new keyframe. So once I've moved off of it, that stopwatch knows that it's recording my position from here on out. So if I move Boxy, after I've moved my time down the timeline, you can see now I've got a path from point A to point B. And notice as soon as I changed my position, it recorded a new keyframe. And now we have animation between point A and point B. Uh, for most keyframe animation, you will need that. You'll need a starting point and an ending point. You just kind of have to think about where that would be. All right, the first time you play this, that's the speed it's going to be. Um, if this whole bar isn't green, the first time you play it, it's going to render out a little bit, so maybe a little slower than natural. Um, but the second time you play it, once this is all green, that's like a progress indicator. Boom, now I've got my animation. It's a little fast, so I'm going to move that out to about a second. Now that I have this keyframe made, if I want this a slower journey from point A to point B, I just need to increase the time between them. So I haven't changed the distance it travels, I've just changed the time that it has to travel. So now instead of a 15 second move, notice this is all kind of blocky right here, it's not all green again. I'm going to click play, it's going to fill that area up. And now the second time I play it, it will actually be the speed at which uh, we're watching it. So that's kind of my flyby box right there. I like box, he's flying pretty well. Um, but he doesn't look quite realistic yet. So what we're going to do is we're going to change these keyframes here and here. Instead of just a linear uh, line with your velocity, meaning um, right now it's going full throttle. As soon as we could play, it's at full speed going from point A to point B. Real objects in the world don't move like that, so if you want to add a little bit of uh, ease in, ease out to it, I'll show you how to do that. You can lasso your keyframes, or you can just pick one and right-click on them, doesn't matter. I'm going to lasso both of these, right-click on it, go to Keyframe Assistant, and just do Easy Ease. That's going to ease in and ease out on both of these keyframes. So right now, you can see they've kind of turned into a diamond shape. And what that means now is if I play this out, remember the first time it's going to be slower, and now that it's rendered, I'm going to go back and play it in real time. Notice what that does. I'm going to move Boxy on screen so you can see the difference. I'm going to click on this one keyframe so the computer knows I'm going to adjust the position that he's at. But you also have to be on that keyframe, otherwise it'll try to create a new keyframe if you move off it and then try to move position, and we don't want to do that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to adjust this keyframe. Um, you can either use your scrubber to go right on it, or you can use these tiny little uh, guys right next to your diamond shape to navigate between keyframes so you know when you're exactly on one. So now that I'm on this keyframe, I'm going to change that position. I'm going to move him onto screen a little bit so we can see. And then the end position, I can either drag to it. You can also hold shift on the keyboard if you want to snap right to these keyframes. Really handy. Or again, you can use these controls to switch between them. I'll highlight it. Now I'm going to move that back on. So let's see the difference in movement. I'm going to reset both these guys. I lasso them. I held control and that'll let me click back to normal keyframes. And that's our regular movement, point A to point B. Pretty standard, no change. If I highlight these, 
right click on it, keyframe assistant again, and easy ease. Let's see the difference in movement. You can see it moves a little more naturally. It's very subtle, but it starts slow, picks up speed, and then ends slowly. And that is going to be what easy ease is all about. Just easing in and out of those keyframes for a more natural feel, just like you'd have in the real world. All right, next thing we're going to do is let's add some rotation to this. So right now we've got position from point A to point B happening. And I'm even going to adjust those a little more, just because I like having it right up to the notches there. There we go. Next thing we're going to do is add some rotation. So in this point, I'm going to go to my rotation controls. You can kind of click on it and drag and preview what's going to happen. Control Z to go back to it. And what I'm going to do with my rotation is, first off, again, click that stopwatch. And that's going to start the process of animation. So right now, rotation at 0, 0, 0 is that value. Next, I'm going to move here. And I want to have my uh, keyframes lined up just because you want synergy with this. You want things to happen at the same time. You don't want it to reach position and then keep rotating uh, when there's no other movement. So I'm just going to line these up. All right, so first thing I did, set my first keyframe, the value at that time. Next, I go to the next keyframe, just move my timeline scrubber, and I can change my rotation. So I'm going to have Boxy do a full rotation. Well, about 180, not really 360. But notice now, an animation is happening. And it's happening because we have a point A at this value, and a point B later on down the timeline at this value. So now let's play it out. And there's my nice box. Again, it doesn't look as natural as it could, just because these, if you notice, are set at linear as well. So I'm going to make those ease in and ease out as well. Right click, keyframe assistant, easy ease. You don't want easy ease for everything, but for certain movements, um, it helps. Boom. So that has a more natural look to it. All right, so the next thing we're going to add to Boxy uh, is we want to give him some appeal. And to give him appeal, we're going to give him some eyes and a mouth. And to do that, I'm going to just go to my boxy layer right here. I'm going to double click on it so we can take a look at him up close. Looks pretty good, but we really want to adjust this layer a little bit. So what we can do is we can try to draw some eyes on him. I'm going to, buy a tool. I'm going to go to my ellipse tool. And right now, I'm adjusting boxy with a mask. As soon as I did that, if I'm selected on an object, it adds a mask to it. And I'm going to make myself a nice little path. I'm going to make my boxy nice and crazy. There we go. So now we've got boxy with three different masks. If we go back to our original composition, that's what we have. Boxy is now just a collection of masks. And all I did was I was selected on boxy. And I double clicked on it so I could see them up close and just use my shape tool and my pen tool to create some basic shapes in him. Um, if I still want him to have a box around himself, uh, we can do that as well. I can add another box layer right here, a new solid, and we can call that Boxy's body. Oops, a boxy, boxy body. And let's make that a different color since I made uh, since I made him red in there. I'm going to make that a white box. All right, notice that box, just like any other layer, covers up everything else. So that one's fully scalable as well. We can transform that. We can bring that scale down and move it over. Also, we can put it underneath him if we like. There we go. So now there's Boxy. He looks pretty cool today. But notice his face is flying off. If we want these things to move together, there's a couple ways we can do that. Um, one way you can link layers is we have all of the movements. I'm going to ignore these masks for a second. All of the movement happens on these lines right here, from position to rotation. Um, so we want this box to follow along with that. One way to do it is you can grab this lasso, this little whip tool right here, and link it to Boxy. So now, wherever that moves, the lower layer moves as well. That's one way to do a link. Um, another way you can do it is let's, right now the parent, that's called uh, parenting, so right now I've parented this layer to Boxy. 